defense. He also demonstrated the different bullets used on sets. My understanding is that you are an armorer, and that is the person who was responsible for handing Alec Baldwin the weapon that he eventually shot Helena with. Can you explain what an armorer is and how you become one? The person responsible for handling the firearms on a film set is the armorer or the prop master. A prop master can handle the guns, uh, particularly if they're licensed. The armor is brought in on larger shows or shows where you, you know, want to maintain safety and have a person there dedicated just to handle the guns. If there's just one pistol in a scene or something simple, uh, the prop master will often handle it and they'll do so very safely. In this instance, it's a Western and there's a lot of gunfire, so you have an armor assigned to that. The armorer cleans the firearms, inspects them regularly. They inspect that the chambers are empty and that the barrel is free of any debris that might come out if a blank was fired. The armorer will load and make ready the gun on command just before they roll. And it, keep in mind, it's the very last thing that happens before they roll. So they finish the blocking rehearsal, the lighting, and then only at the last minute before the camera rolls, the armorer will make the gun what we call hot, meaning that they'll load blank rounds into it. At that point, they hand it to the actor who has the ability to check it if they choose. Though we develop a relationship and a trust uh, between the actor and the entire crew, we create a safe space in which the actor can, we like to think they can fully, you know, play fully. And I recently read that uh, Hannah, who was the armorer, um, she was saying that she was not aware that live rounds were anywhere on the set at all. And so before we get into that, you actually are able to show us the difference between what should have been in the gun and what was actually in the gun and how an armorer would know the difference. Can you show us that? Yeah, um, a regular bullet, an actual cartridge that would fire in a gun looks like this. So you'll see that there's a lead projectile at the front and the casing and a primer. And the primer, when you strike the primer, it creates a small explosion that ignites the gunpowder, which is in the uh, cartridge, and that sends the bullet down the barrel. And you can hear it. You shook that for me earlier. So you a can hear A dummy round. Difference. So yeah. this one is a dummy round. Yeah. And the dummy round has a little BB inside. So instead of gunpowder and instead of a real primer, this is a fake primer that we make for Hollywood so that it looks like a real bullet. And this, I don't think you'll be able to hear it on my computer microphone, but when you shake it, you can definitely hear in person that there's a little BB inside. So it lets the cast and the first AD and everybody know that the armor is actually handing or putting in a dummy round. Now a blank round looks fairly similar, but on the end you'll notice the absence of a bullet. There's no lead projectile to come out. Notice how it's crimped brass and it looks kind of like the end of a hot dog, how it's sort of pinched. So when it fires, that brass just opens up and it lets the gases escape out the front so you do get a bit of fire out the front, so it looks like a real gun, but there's no projectile, there's no lead. And it sounds to me that it seems abnormal to you that the gun was pointed at anyone who wasn't in the movie at that point. Is that part weird that it was pointed at someone who's not an actor? Yeah, in, in our blocking practice before we roll, uh, we figure out exactly where everyone's gonna stand during the scene. So that right. includes the actors in the scene and the people in the camera. These days, most cameras have the ability to do remote control operation. So if you are shooting towards a camera, you're generally not gonna shoot at the camera, you're gonna shoot next to it. And if you're in a scene with two actors and you can see them both on camera, and one actor's supposed to be pointing a gun at the other, we do again, we call it a cheat. And we cheat that gun off to one axis. And you yeah. don't actually point at that actor, you point slightly off. And in fact, to the camera, which is on one side, pointing off actually makes the gun look like it's connecting. It looks better. It looks more real if you cheat it off, which is an irony of this whole thing. So we never, ever let an actor point a gun at another actor. There's three basic gun rules to set safety. There's three basic rules to onset gun safety. One, you always treat a gun as though it is loaded. Two, you never point the gun at another person or camera, anything that you wouldn't want to cause harm to. Three, you never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. What does accountability look like in this situation? I would imagine it's hard for you to hear about 
charges filed and things like this when there are reasons why people on that set were ill-equipped, whether that makes it right or wrong. So for you, is there any appropriate accountability that comes out of this investigation? I think this preventable tragedy gives us a moment to pause and reassess how films are made. First and foremost, um, rushing through safety and not doing safety inspections properly, not having safety meetings in, ban in advance of a scene. Um, I think that's an area that we can definitely fix and look into. And working uh, our crews, super long days, 14, 16, 18 hours a day, and not giving them lunch, that needs to be addressed quite seriously. It's not as simple as whoever pulled the trigger or whoever handed the gun. It sounds like you think systemic issues need to be addressed. I, I firmly believe that there are systemic problems that led to this. Um, certainly, there was a chain of custody of this gun that may not have been observed. There was a failing in allowing live ammunition on a film set. There was a failing of handing an actor a gun with a live round in it. There are several acute failings to this particular moment. And I think they were brought on by, or at least fostered by the systemic problems that we're facing. You were sharing with me before the interview why you have made yourself available to explain what's going on, that it's important to you and the people that are the best of the best in their craft. Can you share with us why you feel it's important that people understand the truth behind what you do? We take great pride in our crafts. We, uh, someone told me years ago that when they started working in theater, uh, their first job, someone said, an actor's like a four-year-old and they play fully, they're totally into it. So we need to safety the stage as if there's a four-year-old out there. And I get it, an actor totally gets in the zone and our job as costumes and props and makeup and lighting is to make everything as safe as we can, yet as real as we can so they can be completely 